Today's section is continuing on on torsional control, and this class today, I'm also going to introduce at the end a demo on some computer software that you're going to be using through uh, the remainder of the course. So it serves two functions. Let's solidify our understanding of proportional control, and let's learn some great software that's going to make our lives quite a bit easier. I thought also to to look at this concept of proportional control, let's use a concrete example that we're going to see um, used once or twice more. And it's an engineering example that I started to introduce last time. And let's just quickly recap. We were considering the case where we've got a tank, and each our tank was feeding upstream and wall street. This is my full screen entry. And that one screen FH, we are going to use to control and adjust for the temperature that you're So my temperature leaving the tank is my control variable as we discussed last time. And we measure that value from the sensor, take that sensor value into our control. But before we do that, in fact, I said last time, let's introduce this idea of creating an error variable. So I'm going to in fact measure the temperature value here of the tank, but I'm going to subtract that from the set point. So set point is my desired temperature. The value I measure on my process is T over there. I'm going to subtract that. And in fact, it's that error that I'm going to feed into my controller. This signal here. And what we did today last time we said we want to consider the most simplest control system where that error simply gets multiplied by a constant AC. And that constant AC then is what's used to manipulate the balance. Draw this upside down a little bit. This KC value. And then place the valve position. So this flow entry then FH is adjusted by the control of the case. So we looked at that diagram the last time. Um, essentially the loop is closed because my control variable get T. My temperature T is my control variable, my manipulated variable is the flow of hot FH. So there's the feedback cycle. And the feedback control system, when we look at it from a process perspective, must have a causal relationship. We can't use a manipulated variable that has no effect on the control variable. That's the concept of a zero gain system, which you looked at in the midterm. So you must have a non-zero gain in order for this controller to ever be effective. And one way to verify your controller's cause and effect relationship is either mentally or through an experiment actually test that manipulated variable control variable here. So let me do some diagram notation that we're going to be using frequently as well. So whenever we consider in our course manipulated variables and controlled variables, we'll often use them on a single axis and we'll split this axis in half and use one half for the manipulated variable, one half for the controlled variable. And consider the following experiment. If you want to make sure that there's a causal relationship here, FH, this flow of half <coughs> If we did the following, we started at some nominal value, we stepped up our hot streams flow rate, we let it steady out, and then drop back down to where we were again. We call that a pulse input. So we're putting in a pulse into the process. And then on the temperature stream, if there's a causal relationship, we should see that effect in the temperature. So temperature will be constant for some period of time. And then at the same point that that pulse input occurs, we should see, in this case, a rise in temperature. 
right? We're increasing the flow of the hot stream, so the temperature will rise and steady out to some new value. Two axes, two variables, but we're going to use this convention where there's a single vertical <coughs> horizontal line. And if I make that pulse down again, I should then observe the same thing, just in mirror image, where it settles back down again. <coughs> so I know now that there's a cause and effect relationship. Flow hot goes up, temperature goes up, flow hot drops back down again, temperature must drop back down to where it started. <coughs> and in fact, what I've drawn over there is first order behavior. That's a typical first order response. So let's assume that we've derived the theoretical model and we can show then that my output T dash of S over F dash H of S. So that part of the stream is my input, temperature is my output. And let's just use numeric values here, KP for the gain tau p for the time constant s plus 1. So tau p is the simple time constant for that first order process. What do we know about the sign of kp? Anything we know about the sign of kp? Positive. What do we know about the sign of tau p? Positive. Time constants are always positive. So Kp is positive, tau P is positive. The Kp being positive is an important part of today's class and understanding. Take a minute to consider what would Kp have been if instead of using the hot stream to adjust temperature, I used the cold stream to adjust temperature. Instead of joining up my feedback loop over here on the hot stream, I decided to use the cold stream. What would KP be? Negative. Negative in that case. Negative. Okay. So if I increase my flow of cold water, temperature drops. So there's a negative relationship. The fact that I'm using hot stream with my process gain KP is positive. The sign of the gain of the process is always going to be a critical parameter. You get that wrong, you will damage your process. Okay, I will show you how you how to how you come to the conclusion. But at least one thing you have to understand is the sign of the gain of the process. You must always get that right. If you never get that wrong, you are guaranteed to cause significant damage to your process and control. So that's that's our example. And then we spent a bit of last class converting that over to a block diagram. And there was a bit of confusion in the block diagram last time, and rightly so, because this is the first time you start to see block diagrams being used, and the emphasis on deviation variables is critical. So let's just illustrate that again, and I'm going to ask you, in fact, to draw two copies of the block diagram, and then we'll look at it, one in regular form and one in deviation form. So, way to begin, well, it's up to you to choose, uh, but typically it's easiest to start by drawing the process block, and then put in the process block, this gain, KP, and tau P, S plus one. Okay. And that's my temperature, and this input here is FH. That's usually the easiest place to start. Your manipulated variable coming in, and your controlled variable leader. Now, that controlled variable then gets fed back around and we compare it to the set point. So the set point is positive, the controlled variable is subtracted from it, and that is forming my error. The error then is what gets fed into this controller. So here my controller will call that GC is the, is the rate, um, expression for that. GC here in this case is a very simple controller. It's just a single value, again, KC. The proportional controller KC. 
Now, before I go put some numeric values onto this block diagram, let's perhaps just also recall what we looked at last time where we said, what is going on in this block, this controller block? This is the simplest control system I, I mentioned. It's what we call a proportional controller. Let's just quickly understand what that is again because there was a bit of discussion on the deviation variables around that.
there's no functional deviation. So the only variable we reduce to deviation form is the vertical variable FH. We call that FH dash. And the definition for FH dash is that it's the regular flow FH minus that steady state value FHS. And if we do that, all we're simply saying is we're shifting the y-axis and then this red line passes exactly through the origin, but the slope is still KC. So if you want, if you've got this in your notebooks, then this curve on the left here is the non-deviation form. And this is the deviation. <coughs> now I'm going to show you how we use those in the block diagram. So take a minute, make sure you've got this block diagram in your notebook and below it or next to it, draw another copy of that same block diagram same time. So when we do that, I'll do it from here. And this time the variables will be deviation form. So S P dash. The only variable that does not go to deviation form is the error. We'll see why that's why that happens. I'm going to put some concrete numbers onto these deviation variables. So let's simply define that SP dash is the regular set point minus the set point in steady state. And for our example, will be the regular set point minus 25 degrees. Let's, in other words, assume that my set point is 25 degrees C. The manipulated variable same thing, manipulated variable in deviation form is the regular manipulated variable minus the manipulated variable at steady state, which in the context of this example is FH is my manipulated variable minus FHS at steady state, and that's 3.5. And then finally, the controlled variable in deviation form is temperature, so T dash this is the regular temperature minus the temperature at steady state, which for this example, let's call that 25 degrees as well. So T dash is the regular temperature that you measure minus the steady state value. Let's understand what we're doing here. We're, by using these numbers, I'm saying we'd like to control this temperature 25 degrees Celsius. My set point is 25 degrees Celsius. And what I'm going to do next is show you how this feedback control system works. Firstly, over here on the right in non-deviation form. And then on the left, we're going to look at it in deviation form. So this version here is in non-deviation.
And it might be helpful because I'm going to do two iterations through this diagram if you have a different color pen or pencil to help understand what, it, what I'm doing here. Yeah. Flow rate increases with error because in this case it makes sense that it increases. If the temperature is too low, you want to increase the flow. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you now in this uh, diagram. Why do you see this part? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay, so this next, I'm going to do four examples, two on the left and two on the right. And these two examples are going to illustrate exactly what's happening with this error and why we're multiplying it by Kc. So let's start as follows. Let's assume for some reason my temperature here is 23 degrees Celsius. So we start over here on the left, on the right hand side, and we're in our deviation form. So my temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. I would like my process to be at 25 degrees Celsius. So therefore my error is 2 degrees. output FH going to be? <laughs> Let's put some numbers on one final value. Let's give KC a value of 0.75. Now perhaps just before I go on, KC must have units. What are the units of KC? are the outputs units divided by the inputs units. So it's meters cubed per minute divided by degrees Celsius. The error, and this is the important part, the error always has the same units as the variable you're trying to control, which also has the same units as the set part. If you want to make the subtraction work, this error must have the same units as the control variable. So my input into the controller is the same unit as the control variable. The output must be the manipulative variable's units. So Kc, that slope then, simply is the slope of the y variable, fh, divided by the units of the x variable, the error. Okay, so if Kc is 0.75, what is the output here, fh? Point seven five times two plus the steady state value. Right? We're in non-deviation form on this form. So we're using this form of this output. So it says that when your error is two degrees, you read up on this curve at two degrees, and that's the flow that you're going to put into your process. So that flow is going to be the slope times the value 2 on the x-axis plus the intercept of 3.5. So in fact, my input here is 3.5 plus 0.75 times 2. So that's 5 units, 5 meters cubed per minute. What's going to happen to the temperature? Leaving. If I gone from 3.5 up to 5 meters cubed per minute, I've increased my flow of the hot stream into the tank. Temperature's going to rise. 
by how much, well, by how much depends how long I wait for, right? Because this is a first order response. So if I wait a long time, I'm going to see the final value. Or if I wait a short time, I'm going to see a gradual rise. So this is where I want you to start to see what's happening. Let's assume that if I wait long enough to such a point where that temperature now is 25, 24.5 degrees. So the temperature's gone up, but it hasn't reached target yet. So 24 and a half, let's feed that back. Compare it to the set point of 25. Now my error is 0.5. Okay. So notice what the proportional controller has done. It's moved your process towards the set point so that the error gets reduced. So the error has gone from 2 degrees to a half a degree. What's the flow going into the tank next? So three and a half, the baseline value, plus 0.75 Kc times a half. Okay, so it's always going to be of the form FHS plus Kc times the error. That's the form formula. So now my flow in is just a little bit more than three and a half meters cubed per minute. And temperature will then keep rising a little bit more, but slower than it did before. So you'll get a rapid rise in temperature. <coughs> what we'll observe here is if we start at 23 degrees, this will rise up. And the purpose of our class today is later on is to figure out where that ends. Let's repeat this whole deviation form quickly so that uh, you can understand what's going on. So in deviation form, what is SP dash? SP dash is 25 minus 25. Yeah? Everyone clear on that? Set point in deviation form is 25 minus 25. So my target there is zero, in fact. So now simply subtracting the steady state. Dash, on that first iteration, I was 23 degrees in non-deviation form. So in deviation form, what is T dash? Two. Okay, 25, 20, uh, wait, is it two? Negative two. Okay, T dash is minus two because it's the temperature we're at, 23 degrees minus the steady state value, 25. 23 minus 25 is negative 2. So now I come back, feedback to that around, I say 0 minus, minus 2 gets me two, 2 degrees error. So notice here I get the same error as I got there before. So 2 degrees Celsius error that I had in non-deviation form, I still get the same 2 degrees Celsius in deviation form. This is why error is never in deviation form here. But we don't consider it to be a deviation because error by definition is a deviation. Okay. So if you wanted to, you could simply see this as that's a deviation and this was a deviation all along. Because by definition, error is a, is a difference from where you'd like to be. So 0 minus minus 2 gets you 2 degrees over there. What is the output from the controller this time? Mm -hmm. <coughs> this is not a trick question. This is just 0.75 times 2. 0.75 times 2. Okay. So 1 and a half. 1 and a half units increase in the flow. It's a deviation variable, so it implies that 1.5 units increase from wherever you were prior to this point in time, which was the steady state. Temperature then, what will happen if we put a positive input into this transfer function? Kp is positive, we said that earlier. So put a positive input into this transfer function, what's going to come out here in the output? is that temperature is going to rise. 
check this is going to go up. And let's use the same value as we had before. 24 and a half degrees is deviation for that's now minus 0.5. So that minus 0.5 and deviation for gets paid back zero. Yeah, just I have to no, I'm gonna show you what that actually is. But for now let's just use numbers. So minus 0.5, the error then is zero minus minus 0.5, which gives you a positive error of about degree Celsius. Then on the output side from the controller, as before, 0.75 kc times a half, which is whatever that is. <coughs> so the formula here this time is kc times the error. Now let's take a look at this analytically. So there's conceptually what we expect. Let's take a look at this algebraically and uh, make this, take this just to be a little bit more abstract so that we can generalize this. And to do that, we're going to use what we learned last time in the previous class where we derived the closed loop transfer function. substituting what GC is and what GP is. So I'll give you a minute to do that and simplify that equation. GC for, is simply KC. So what is going to happen to this closed loop if we're just using a proportional controller and use that GP is the process gain KP divided by tau P S plus 1. So it's a first order system. I'll give you a minute or two. Sub in those two transfer functions Simplify the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so if we sub in over there, we get AC, my first term, the next term is KP times tau PS plus 1. 
which in my denominator I get to say repeated plus one plus KC KP tau PS plus one. We can simplify that a little bit by by multiplying by tau PS plus one on the numerator and the denominator. And what that buys us is a little bit of a simplification, so we get t dash of s over sp dash of s. And it comes out to be kc kp on the numerator and your denominator then has an interesting form, tau p s plus 1 plus kc kp. those red brackets is illustrating to you what the response is going to be. It's in fact a single value k star, if you can calculate, plus the time constant tau star s plus 1. So notice that structure in the response. It says that if I make a change in my input, sp, to make a step change, for example, in SP, the overall output, the temperature, is going to behave as a first order system. And that first order system has some gain K star, which is this numerator, it's going to have some time constant plus one. And in fact, algebraically, you to prove to yourself it's one step to do this, what k star and tau star are. So in this case, k star is the controller gain multiplied by the process gain, ac times kp. Tau p, sorry, tau star, I should say equal to the process time constant divided by 1 plus KCKP. understand what this says. This is a this is important and perhaps I'd rather not rush the software then I'll put that off till Friday so that we understand what this is saying. It says that if we push that entire plot diagram we have over there on the left hand side down to a single transfer function. In other words I'd like to see one transfer function that shows me what T dash is doing when I make a change in my point SP. Now inside here, there's of course, there's my KC, and there's my process, and there's a feedback control system, all inside that block. But what we're saying is we don't care what's inside this block. We're hiding that all away, and we're simply creating a single input SP and a single output T. So this is someone, this is the equivalent of someone standing at the tank and says, I would like to increase the tank from operating at 25 degrees Celsius. So currently we're operating at 25 degrees Celsius on my SP. Let's increase that to 27 degrees Celsius, for example. What is going to be the response of my temperature 
<coughs> under the feedback control. So inside this box, there's a whole feedback control system going on. So if I make a two degree Celsius increase here, so in other words, I'm saying SP dash of S is equal to two over S. I'm making a two unit increase in the set point, going to say from 25 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. But I'm doing that in deviation form. This is very important to understand. We're in deviation form, so even though I was at 25, I'm going to 27, that input is 2 over S. It's a 2 unit increase in the desired set point. What we're asking is, what is going to be this output temperature? Everyone clear on that definition? Now let's see what if this is a good control system. One important... Sorry, I just understand how you got it. Through here by one plus KCKP. So I get it into a square time. Okay, now it's really what do we want a good a good control system will get you to the same point. Right, so if we want to go from 25 degrees Celsius to 27, if it's a good controller, we'll be able to get to 27. Let's take a look if the proportional controller can actually do that for us. So what are we going to use to do this? I'm going to check if I can get to steady state or eventually on that temperature. So we're going to use the final value here on this single transfer function. So by using the final value here, see whether we actually achieve our aim. And what we'll do here is we'll put in that, that input in SP dash and we'll find and calculate T dash of S is equal to now K star times tau star and then my input of two units of the S. So if this is a good control system, the final value of T dash of S should also be 2. I'm asking for temperature to go from wherever it was and increase ultimately by 2 degrees Celsius over here. So I would like to see at the end a 2 degrees Celsius increase in that temperature. We already know that this is going to have a first order response. We know that because this entire transfer function from the input from SP to the output from temperature, that's a first order transfer function. So we know it's going to have this shape. What we don't know is if it's going to actually end up two degrees higher as well. Okay, so I'm asking there, how much higher are we going to be? Well, let's take a look. If we use the final value theorem, on this, the final value theorem says that T dash <coughs> as time tends to infinity is equal to the limit as S tends to zero of S times T dash of S. So that's simply a use of the final value theorem. times 2. Okay? So if you apply the final value theorem, you get 2 times k star. Did we achieve our goal? Yes. Like we said we would achieve our goal if t dash, as it goes to infinity, is equal to 2. We've got an output of 2 times k star. So we would achieve our goal if k star is equal to 1, right? Is k star, can k star be 1? So let's take a look at k 
K star yet. K star is equal to KC times KP divided by 1 plus KC. Okay. K star can never be equal to 1. In fact, it will always be less than 1. Always. So this tells me that yeah. I will never achieve any set point change with a proportional only controller. Okay. So a proportional only controller is a great controller. It's got a lot of intuitive sense. It says if you're far away from where you'd like to be, in other words, you've got large error, put in large input. And as you get closer and closer to the input, uh, as you get closer and closer to where you'd like to be, start making your error smaller and smaller. But unfortunately by doing that, we actually can never achieve our goal. You'll always approach your goal, but you'll never achieve it. Okay? In fact, you can notice here, as you make KC larger and larger and larger, you'll get closer and closer to 1. Okay, what do I mean by that from, uh, from this case study's perspective? So let's just perhaps make a note here. Kc is increased. We will approach our goal. So you can change it though. You can choose what that slope is. So if KC is increased, we'll approach our goal. Um, <coughs> last, I should say, we'll approach our goal closer, but we'll still never achieve it. So what do we mean by that geometrically? Well, let's uh, visualize what it means to adjust KC. <coughs> In the context of this example, it says that you simply make that slope more steep. There's my error, and there's my flow in H. I had started with KC perhaps being this, this much. If I increase KC, so this is increase KC. Take a look at what this does geometrically. It says, imagine if we had an error here of two units. With the original controller, I would have put in some flow. With this revised controller that uses the larger KC, it puts in a greater flow. So here's our understanding of, of a proportional controller. If KC is increased, we will approach our goal closer and have what we call more aggressive control. The analogy here is, this is the type of person who drives their car by ramming down the gas pedal. Right? They lurch forward really fast. If you're, if you're away from where you want to be, you put in a lot of energy into the process. You increase your flow dramatically. Okay? So you will You'll get to your goal faster, but you still actually will never achieve it with a proportional only controller. <coughs> so that's an important shortcoming. We'll never approach our goal with a proportional only controller. And next class, we're going to take a look at how we can improve that by adding what we call the integral mode. So we'll go to PI.